What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Last week's video, I'm gonna link down in the description of this video and also pinned in the comments. It's a very important video for you guys to watch. The video is reaching a lot of people. I'm very uh, grateful for that, but the idea of it is to get that video out there to as many people as possible so they can have the best possible results. And I'll pin that down there for you guys to check out. In today's video, I wanna discuss how to attract deer this fall for hunting season. A lot of these things are maybe common sense, but a lot of times they're overlooked. So number one is when you have, you know, a piece of property that you're trying to hunt and attract deer in, one of the biggest things you can do is literally stay off that land as much as possible. We have a piece of land, we get excited and we, and we want to hunt it, right? So every free chance we get, we head out there and we hunt that land. But what happens is a lot of times these properties aren't set up properly and we do more harm than good because we, we're accessing in poor locations. We're spooking deer constantly off that land. And if your goal is to maybe shoot just does and maybe small bucks, this may work for you. But, you know, I don't know what the percentage is, but, you know, whatever percentages of hunters that want to attract the larger deer and shoot the larger deer, we have to be more cautious of how we access the land and try not to spook deer. When I go to consulting, I emphasize this with clients is that you know, we can't always hunt, you know, as much as possible. We have to access these areas a certain strategic way, and sometimes it's best to stay off the land. I always tell all my clients and everybody that, you know, we have to stay off. Hunt, don't hunt because you want to, hunt because it makes sense. What makes sense to hunt? Well, we have good weather, you know, we have a cold front coming, maybe a possible storm or a storm cleared up or we have good wind day, whatever it is. Hunt because it makes sense. Don't hunt because you want to. That's going to, in, in itself, attract deer to your land because they're gonna be less pressured. Your neighbors are maybe hunting constantly, right? They're constantly pushing the deer away. And if they have this piece of property, your land, to go to when there's no stress, it's gonna attract deer. Number two is obviously a quality food plot program having food in there for as many months out of the year, not only suppressing weeds, but improving the soil. So when we do go to plant our attractive plot for the fall, it has good nutrition soil, good, you know, high quality soil, so it can give the nutrition to the plants, which then can uh, feed our wildlife. And when you have high quality soil, it's gonna be more attractive to the wildlife. You know, does and bucks, they seek out the most high quality food they can. So if you have this food plot, you know, that's very nutritious, you're gonna attract more deer, right? But in also with that is having this fall food plot, making sure you don't spook the deer off of it. You know, good access routes, having cover in those areas where you can access from the backside so you don't spook the deer. This is a very common issue because again, we have this food plot, we get excited about it, and we wanna hunt this food plot. So we constantly, constantly hunt it and spook deer, whether it's getting into it or maybe getting out of it. You know, the deer are feeding in that plot. So every time we get out, we spook the deer, but you can minimize that by having, you know, good access routes, exit routes, having cover in those areas, hunting off that plot just a smidge and having maybe, you know, a soft edge uh, where you hinge cut some trees or something to where you can prevent, you know, when you can climb in and out of that tree, the deer can't see you, you know, cause you have that cover in front of you whether it's planting Egyptian wheat in those areas in front of your stands so we can access the backside, whatever it is, you just have to minimize it. You know, I see a lot of clients too where we have this food plot and they put a box blind either out in the middle of it or right on the edge and it stands out like a sore thumb. And the first thing I do is when I see this happen, I look at it and say, okay, does this box blind even make sense to have on this food plot or we need to move this thing in the corner or opposite side, whatever it is, to get it out of the way so it's not directly in the you know the line of sight of deer another thing that i noticed that some properties you know they may be attractive early season they may be attractive late season they may be attractive during the middle of the season may, maybe just for the rut and there's things that we can do to kind of change that a little bit but a lot of it is property dependent so you know we can say all these things like hey this is what we have to do to attract to attract deer to our property but no matter what you do to some properties, sometimes they just don't really change a whole lot. So, 
you know, from what one person says, right, and they try to relate what that person says to their property doesn't really change that much. Well, it's a lot of this is property dependent and you're going to be hearing me talk about this a lot on my channel because a lot of guys will say, we have to do this, we have to do that. But guys, sometimes a deer just doesn't want to be there, right? It, it's very property dependent. What your neighbors are doing affects all of this. You know, have some talks with your neighbors about, you know, all being on the same page or if you have hunters uh, sitting your fence line sending your property line you know this is all going to have a direct effect so if you have an isolated piece of land right that's not connected to any neighboring properties for 300 yards in every direction guess what that piece of property you're hunting is going to be very highly attractive right but if you have a 50 acre piece of property that's bordered by neighboring properties all on every corner every side that piece of property is going to be different and tough to hunt because of neighboring hunting pressure. So yes, we have that high quality soil, right? Through soil amendments, you know, fer fertility levels, soil samples, lime and, and all that good stuff, cover crops, you're improving the soil. You're having a high quality fall food plot species grown in that plot that's adequate for your property and that what makes sense planted at the right time. Um, and then hunting maybe a little bit less, right? All these things are going to attract deer to your property. Um, if you have that larger land, a couple hundred acres, few hundred acres, 500 acres, thousand acres, then yeah, we can get away with more hunting, right? You know, if we screw up a piece of, you know, a chunk of that property, we have the other 900 acres that's unpressured. So hopefully this helps you leading into this fall's hunting season, right? Basic stuff, but a lot of times we overlook it. We want to hunt every chance we can get. You know, it didn't work there. But we, we want to hunt every chance we can get because we're excited. Well, maybe it's best to leave our land alone, maybe go hunt some public land, right? Let our land rest a little bit, take it out on public land. So, choice is yours. Hopefully this helps you. Leave a comment down below if you guys have any questions.